So good morning and welcome to Soul Soup this morning. I'm excited that you're here with us or listening on the recording. I'm Dr. Jeanette Freeman, here to share a little bit of inspiration, a little something for our soul, a little something to warm our heart, and a little process to cause some transformation this morning. So thank you for being here and being with us this morning and being interested in some sort of transformation. So this morning we're looking at the power of your enlightened no, the power of enlightened no. And we have been talking a little bit about Gay Hendricks' book, The Big Leap and looking at how we unconsciously have a block on our leap to the next level. Next level of happiness, next level of success, next level of health, next level of peace. That we have these unconscious programs that keep us at a certain level and when we reach beyond that, there's something in us that's like says, no, that's not enough, or that's that's too much. Like the thermostat. So we have a thermostat that's set for a certain amount of money or a certain amount of health or a certain amount of love, a certain amount of connection. And when we go above that, the first impulse is like to we unconsciously cause some suffering or cause ourselves to go back and not move forward. And if we can become aware of when that limit has been breached, the upper limit problem starts to happen, then we can do something to bridge and to move through that. So for example, a person may be making the same amount of money, you know, pretty much, and well, like a lottery winner. So a lottery winner, many, many times, they all of a sudden have all this money, but unconsciously, they're not used to that. That's not familiar to their brain. And they find ways to get rid of it, to unconsciously lose it, spend it, etc. And they go back to the level that they're comfortable with. So if we were raised and didn't have a whole bunch of love and connection, and we grow and we start allowing more love and connection in our life, and when it goes over our internal set point, we can find a way to push it away, not let it in and push it away. But if we can catch some of these experiences when they're happening, we can repattern, reprogram, and call in new levels of beliefs in order to experience higher level of joy and love and peace, which is your divine right. So our divine self, our higher self is unlimited and it's continually wanting to express through us in greater health and joy and abundance and uh, love. And it wants that. So unfortunately, we're operating through this conditioned brain, conditioned program, conditioned culture. and if we don't wake up and see what's happening, we will live out of that old program and that condition. So today we're looking at the power of the enlightened no, that what we say no to is every bit as important that allows us to say yes to something else. Now, Mr. Hendricks talked about in the in the book that what we say no to, that we get in alignment with our genius, with our purpose, with where we're going. We got to have goals. We know where we're going. And a lot of times different opportunities come in and it's tempting to say, well, I'll take that or I'll take that when we know it's not in alignment with our genius. It's not in alignment. And he talked about a story where he was offered a book deal and they were giving him a $50,000 check. That'd be hard to turn down, but he knew that all the time that it would take to write that book, when that book wasn't in alignment with his genius, it wasn't in alignment with his goals and where he wanted to go. And so he knew he had to turn that down and say no to that 
in order to open up to something else and he didn't know what it was opening up to he had to take a risk and say no it doesn't feel in alignment and it was because of that that he actually moved into some even better opportunities that were even better than he could have imagined because he was willing to say no to that which wasn't serving his higher good so um we do that in a lot of we we do that in a lot of ways and so the invitation is hey you know what is it that i am that might might need to say no to and i want to just take it a little a little deeper as far as even thought patterns so um a lot of times we are operating at a certain limit because it's comfortable and it feels safe to us. I want to share a quick story and I've, I've shared this before, but it keeps coming to me. So I'm going to share it. So there was this family, this man and this woman, and they lived in this little village and they had a school. They had no money. They had absolutely nothing but one scrawny cow. So you know this story, some of you, this scrawny cow story. And so they had this scrawny cow, but it was all they had. So they, you know, they uh, were able to get their milk from this cow and they were able to trade some of the milk or, or cheese for other things. And it was was all they had and one day they had a great teacher who came knocking on their door with his seven students and this is a great spiritual teacher and he came knocking at their door because he wanted to uh have dinner with them and he went to them and he says would you please feed me and my seven students now it was a great honor to do that this was an amazing honor. And he says, yes, absolutely, I will. Let me go check with my wife on the menu. He goes into his wife and they're like, we don't have any food. We don't have anything to do here with this. What are we gonna do? But it was such an honor to say yes. They had to say yes to this deep honor of inviting this great teacher into their home and defeating them. And in that moment, they had to say yes to that. And so he says, what are we going to do? And he says, I've got to take the cow. I'm going to go take the cow and sell the cow and get food. So he goes into the village. He sells the cow and he just comes back loaded with the best meat and the best wine and fruits and vegetables and this wonderful feast. And he comes back and he takes it back. And they lay out this fantastic feast for the honored guest and his students and he said and they had such a wonderful time and they ate all the food and as soon as the food was all gone every, i mean they ate it all they chewed all the meat off the bones like everything was gone all the wine all the food everything and they left and they went out and the husband and wife are looking at themselves and going oh my gosh why did we just say yes to this we're used to saying, yes, I'm only going to have this scrawny cow. I'm only going to have this scrawny cow. And now we have nothing. What are we going to do now? And they were so upset. And the husband says, let me go think about this. I don't know what to do. And he goes off and he runs off into the forest. Finally gets down on his knees and surrenders and cries and says, you know, I, I don't know what to do now, God. What do I do? I've just given up. The only, limitate, the only thing I ever had, now I have nothing. And pretty soon he hears kind of stirring in the bushes some uh, somebody and he looks around and he sees this man and his man's coughing and choking and and laying there and he goes over to help him and he wants to help him and he lifts him up he says come to my home let me feed you let me take care of you and the man said the man said uh no just let me rest here and and they started talking and the man started telling him about how he's he's dying 
he just left his family. His family, he's a very rich man, and his family only wants him to die so they can take all his money. And he came out to the forest to die by himself because he doesn't want those family members to have his money. And he goes on to talk to this, this man, and, and he says, well, let me take you home. And finally he says, listen, I don't have enough energy to go. I am dying right now. He says, but in my pocket is a map. And I buried all my money here and I want you to have it. He says, you're the only one that's ever been kind to me. And so he coughed and he sputtered and he died. The man looked in his, his pocket and he looked at it and sure enough, there was a map. And he went there to that map and he said, he went to that map and he says, there it was, all this money. And he took that home and he had all the wealth that he could possibly want. And five years later, he's w driving in his gorgeous carriage with his beautiful wife and their clothes. And there they see the teacher and his seven students. And the students looks to their master and says, Master, isn't that that family? Isn't that that husband and wife that, that we went to that day? Isn't that the one we ate out of house and home? And the master looked at him and at the students and said, yes, it is. And that was something that we had to do so that they could let go in order to receive the good that life had for them. They had to let go of that scrawny cow. They had to say no to the scrawny cow, and they had to say yes to the greater opportunity. And so a lot of times we are saying yes, unconsciously, to our scrawny cows. We are saying yes, unconsciously, to a little bit of scrawny love because, you know, it's better than nothing. Or we're saying yes to a little bit of scrawny help because it's better than nothing or we're saying yes to a little bit of money we're saying yes to just a little bit when spirit and life has more for us and sometimes we have to really draw a line in the sand and in an enlightened powerful way say no say no to that which isn't is no longer enough say and and i like to say it it's just a matter first of all of saying no to i will not think in that way any longer what am i going to say no to that will open up the way for my yeses to come into my life so in other words let's look at um this Let's look at some very basic things. So what we say, um, what we say, what we should say no to, that's getting in our way to our greater yeses, are the littlest thoughts like, I woke up this morning and I don't feel like going to the gym. I don't feel like exercising. I don't feel like eating right. I don't feel like doing this. And, I, and so in a way I'm saying yes to unhealth. Yes to not feeling good versus taking a lot of energy to go, yes, I feel fantastic. Yes, I do want to go to the gym. Yes, I do want to take care of myself. And we must attach so much joy and pleasure to that which we want to say yes to. And we begin to attach pain to that which we want to say no to. In other words, so the, the brain, the way we're wired, we are wired to move towards pleasure and we are wired to move away from pain.
We are wired to move towards pleasure and move away from pain. So when we start to decide what is it that I want to say yes to, I have to attach so much pleasure to it because that will make me do it. In other words, if I say I want to go to the gym, but I hate it, I'm not going to do it. But if I want to go to the gym and I know it's good for me and I want to make that a yes, I must align pleasure with it. I must align pleasure with it. And I can choose to align pleasure with it. I can decide to decide, but wow, this is amazing. I feel so good. It feels so good to take care of myself. I align more pleasure with that which I want to say yes to. And I, I let myself align pain to what I want to say no to. Like it does when it, when it feels painful for me to keep being alone, let's say lonely or alone, when it's that, I allow that for me to see the pain about that, then I will say, no, I want to move towards pleasure. And I, if I make attention to keep connected to all the times I feel connected and in love with people and and in communion and put tons of attention. I love this. It is so pleasurable for me. I love to be in connection with other people. I love that. My, I will start to move towards pleasure. My brain will lead me in the direction of pleasure because that's the evolutionary, that is the left evolutionary um, context of how the brain works, moving us in towards pleasure more and more. And so when we're t aligning we align pleasure and joy with any bit of money that's in our life. Go, oh, I love having this dollar that I have. It is so wonderful to have this. And instead of aligning so much, you know, attention with having not having enough, like we put so much attention, I've got to hold on to that scrawny cow. I got to, we're saying, I love that. And instead, just like pushing that to the but I align, I align with having more abundance in my life. I love having more abundance in my life. I love having more abundance in my life. I love, the, I love this one thing that I have. It's so fulfilling to me. Aligning my pleasure with that which I want in my life and aligning that internal pain with what I no longer want that doesn't, isn't in alignment with me. Saying no, saying no to what I do not want in order to experience what I do want. So it's like, I love my work. I love it. I put lots of attention on, on the good that I want more of in my life. I love being healthy. I love being connected. I love going to the gym. I love eating good food. I love it. And I say no to that which no longer serves me. When we begin to make the decision when we begin to make the decision to say yes to that which we want and say no to that which no longer serves us, we begin to break through those limits and experience the life that we were meant to. We become aware of how these old limiting blocks are in our way and say no. And you know, my favorite is the, the Scarlett O'Hara scene <clears throat> from Gone with the Wind. Some of you may remember it when she just like gets down on her knees and draws this line and says, no, I will never be poor again. No, 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 right? And it was like, no, this is not working for me. This scrawny cow, freaking no. I say no to that scrawny cow. I say no to that limitation. I'm like, I'm saying yes. And the whole universe hear me right now that I am saying yes. Yes to greater love and life and happiness and internal peace. Yes to the peace that is right here beyond everything else. I'm saying yes to that because I am saying no to conflict and struggle and stress and everything that unconsciously is going on. I say no. I turn off the TV. I turn off listening to things that are making pulling me down. I say turn off to when my mind starts going into a negative downhill spin. I say no to the darkness of depression and say yes to the light. Open the shades of the window. Let the sunshine in. Saying yes to the kind of thoughts and beliefs and ideas that are going to take us forward to be even more expansive than we ever were. 
So what I say no to is every bit as important as what I'm going to say yes to. So this week, we can look at this, and this week, I encourage us all, I'm certainly practicing as well, that when I notice myself feeling bad in any way, it's because my thoughts have taken me down a road that aren't serving me, that my thoughts are taking me down a road of limitation and fear and doubt and worry when I can say, stop, no. I may be used to that, and maybe what I held on to is my scrawny cow thinking it's going to keep me safe, but that's not true. And so what is true is my stop in that moment to go, no, there is one power, and it is a power for good, and this universe is operating in greater life, greater joy, greater happiness, greater abundance. That is a reality I want to align with. That is a reality I want to say yes to. That is a reality I want to refocus my attention and keep my attention focused on where I want to go, not where I don't want to go. So I say no to those thoughts and feelings and beliefs that just take me down that road of pissosity. Pissosity, you know, like being pissed off or whatever, doubt and fear. So right now, let's make a decision of what we will say yes to and say yes to moving through the blocks and saying no to those blocks so that we can move forward. Would that be all right? All right. So we have our marching orders for the week, but now it's time to integrate this into a hypno process, which is an opportunity to go into your subconscious mind and give clear and direct orders and speak to that part of your mind that is running the show. We want to get beyond just the conscious mind and get down into the unconscious mind and do that. So wherever you are right now, wherever you are right now, start to relax if you can, anything you need to do to um, get in a space of relaxation. And then let's go ahead and um, I think everybody's muted. We want to make sure everybody's muted. And I'm going to put on some music. All right. Uh, so let's just start to settle in and relax. That's right. So just settling in and bringing all your attention just to the breath. And start to relax to become very, very present. And so right now, go ahead and look up. That's right. Look up like you are looking up into your eyebrows. Roll your eyes up as if you're trying to look into your own eyebrows. And then just keep your eyes glued to a real or imagined spot overhead and just breathe in and breathe out.
That's right. Looking up, you will begin to just find that your eyes, if they're still open, will start to blink. And then just simply close your eyelids right down, all the way down. And as your eyelids shut down, you can feel that fluttering sensation going on in your eyelids, and that's a good sign. And then you can just relax your eyes and feel your eyes closing and becoming more and more relaxed. That's right, and just drop your chin down just a fraction. So you feel that same feeling like you're looking down, like you're looking down over a balcony or down a flight of stairs. And I'm going to ask you just to imagine that you are walking, imagining yourself walking down a flight of stairs. And as I count, you're going to see your feet and hear your feet and feel your feet going down each step. And as you're looking down 10 steps and you're moving on to step 10, as each muscle and every nerve lets loose and you go deeper and deeper. You're taking step nine as a wave of relaxation washes over you now. You're taking step eight, and you can see your feet, hear your feet, feel your feet treading each step as you move down, drift down, and travel down to an even deeper level. You're taking step seven and going deeper with every heartbeat. You're taking step six as each sound or noise around you just carries you even deeper, further, into your relaxation. It's the sleep of the nervous system, a sleep that you're going into beautifully and perfectly right now, where your awareness is wide awake and listening to my voice, but your body and your nervous system is calming way down. That's right, even more relaxed. You're taking step five, and you're halfway down, going deeper and deeper and more and more relaxed. And you're taking step four as you gently and calmly and easily move on over to an even deeper level. You're taking step three. Just go deeper. Step two, going deeper and deeper into an awareness of yourself. And you are taking step one. And just go even deeper and sink deeper every time you hear my words. You're becoming so relaxed. And as you hear my voice, you can just tune out everything. 
And this sweet relaxation is just coming to you. You don't need to do anything. You're just allowing this peace to come to you. That's right. And I want you just to imagine right now that you are going back in time. You're going right back in time to your childhood home. The home you lived in between the age of two and nine. If you moved, it doesn't matter. Just pick a home. In fact, your mind will pick one for you. And you are traveling back to that childhood home and being drawn back and pulled back and moving back in time and going back, 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 all the way to that childhood home. And suddenly you're outside and you're walking in the front door and you're seeing yourself as a really cute little kid, like a puppy, like you're full of life. You're early to that place where you just were happy. And go back to that time when you were happy because a baby comes in happy ask for what it wants. If it's hungry, it asks for it. If the baby wants something, it asks for it. A happy little child makes a decision to go towards what's pleasurable and just says yes to that. Imagine yourself that child. And somewhere along the line, all children learn limitations. Somewhere along the line, they learn that they can only have so much love or so much money or so much health. And the fact that you can just look back into your childhood with beautiful awareness, like it's way below you, you can observe it without being lost in it. You can just see now. And you can see when you started to make a decision that you should be limited in love or money. You can see from this viewpoint that you made a decision to be limited in some way. And from this viewpoint of just looking back, you can make a choice now just to say no. No to those limiting beliefs. No to beliefs that there's only a limited amount of love or only a limited amount of money or limited amount of safety. But right now, looking back on that little child and that little childhood home where you picked up these beliefs, right now from the bigger viewpoint that you really are, you can say no to that. You can say thank you to parents, churches, environment that helped bring those about, and you can say no, I'm making some new choices now. And whatever it is that comes to you, just trust your own mind. Many times it's something that's really on your mind, like help or money or love. What is it that you really want to move forward and expand your receiving, expand your yes? So 
So looking back at that little child, see that belief that came up that limited you. And say, no thank you. That's no longer my truth. And in that moment, let's just begin to watch this environment start to shift as you begin to make new changes at whatever age to say yes to greater love, yes to support, money, help, whatever it is that you decide right now that you are saying yes to. That's right. Saying yes to. And I want you just to imagine that you're going to grow up this child now and grow them up with a whole new alignment with greater yeses of what you want to say yes and allow that child to grow up and create new memories now of saying yes. So for example, if you, so let's go through different scenarios. So saying yes, maybe you had situations where you didn't have all the love and acceptance and unconditional love you wanted right now, say yes. Yes, I am extremely lovable. I receive love. I love having people around me. I love being in intimate relationships. I love having this in my life and growing yourself up saying more and more love is there for me honoring all that receiving even more love even more acceptance even more nurturing even more intimacy even more communion trust that's right And then imagine that you received limitations on support or supply or money. Say right now, more than enough. Yes, even more than enough. Abundance is mine. I say yes to even more money, support, supply, and abundance in my life now. You're receiving more and more abundance and support in your life right now. Letting go of all those old ideas and you are now saying yes, yes to even more money, abundance, support, and supply. Yes. And at any part when you picked up a belief that you were, it was somehow you were unhealthy in any way or your body wasn't good in some way, say no to that. And right now say yes to help and beauty and vitality and youthfulness and say yes to a rejuvenating and a rejuvenating body that heals itself and and rejuvenates rejuvenates it at every moment say yes to that say yes yes my body is a constant rejuvenating vehicle. And at any place, looking back, that you took on a belief in anxiety and stress and worry and doubt and fear, letting that go and now saying no to that. That's not true. What is true is that you are completely supported and you can be in alignment with deeper peace, in alignment with deeper peace and connection and spiritual awareness and wholeness and oneness. And saying yes to that, saying yes to that. And growing you up to be right there in this present moment, saying yes to greater health, feeling the joy and pleasure that it feels to feel healthy, 
making a command to the body now to rejuvenate with greater health and vitality, aligning with greater love, intimacy, connection, how wonderful it is to allow people into your life, deeper love, intimacy, honesty, vulnerability, trust, receiving love, receiving giving, receiving, giving. That's right. And saying yes right now to the more than enough, the more than enough supply, the more than enough of everything. Saying yes right now to abundance in every way. Saying yes. Saying yes, saying yes. Breathing it in, it just allowing so much pleasure to just wash over you, saying yes to the more than enough. And then allowing your awareness to expand even more where you just feel that deep connection to life, to spirit, to God, to your soul. Allowing that peace to just wash over you and saying yes. Yes. Even more peace, even more awareness, even more oneness. That's right. And even as I speak, commanding, constructing, directing your brilliant mind, go ahead, reactivate, regenerate, remanifest, recreate that natural positive state that you were born with before you picked up other people's ideas. And your mind is doing that right now. And your brilliant subconscious mind remembers how you came into the planet. And it is reactivating and manifesting and regenerating and recreating all of it. At the very same time, your conscious mind is just forgetting all the old negative stuff and old habits. You're leaving them behind. You're letting them go. They're like water in a shower. They just wash down the drain. And other people's negative words and images are gone too. And your mind is forgetting the old negative stuff. And the other part is reactivating and regenerating and recreating. Remember, your subconscious mind is remembering everything it needs to remember. Everything you were born with, your vitality and your life and your love. And everything that you don't need that you're saying no to, you're just letting that go. You're erasing them. It's being erased for you, eradicated, disappeared, and gone. And you're breathing in. And as you breathe out, I want you just to imagine you're breathing out a mist. The kind of mist you see coming out of a horse's mouth on a cold day. And as you exhale, exhale this mist you're exhaling all of those negative words and images and you're replacing them with positive ones. You're imprinting back into your mind the enthusiasm for life that you were born with, the unstoppable self-belief that you were born with. One more time, you're reactivating, regenerating, recreating, remanifesting every positive, good, supportive idea and just choosing to leave the old behind so that when you're ready, you can slowly and calmly and easily just come back to your full awareness. So that you can just take a deep breath and fill up your lungs and release. 
That's right. And how wonderful it is to know that you can just let go of the old that you've said no to and you can align with your yes because you don't need to hold on to the negativity. You're letting it go. That's right. So allowing yourself to feel deeply as you take a deep breath, feel deeply this unconditional love and support and well-being and joy and peace and love and abundance and support. That's right. And as we you take another deep breath on the count of one, I want you to start to come back to three, four, and five, and just fill up your lungs, taking a very deep breath when you're ready to just open your eyes, feeling awake, alive, and alert, bringing back this joy, taking just a very deep breath to come back into the space. That's right. Feeling awake and aware and alive. There we go. Ah, all right. So let's just gently start to come back to the room. That's right. So we're going to start to bring our awareness back 